Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some additional discoveries and confirmations about the inner structure of our planet, planet Earth. Because it turns out, just like the scientists thought for about 20 years now, there is definitely another structure inside our planet that the scientists are currently referring to as the innermost inner core. Maybe not the best name, but that's the only name we have for now. And we've actually initially discussed some of these discoveries a couple of years ago, in a video that you can find in the description, but the confirmation for all of this came very recently, only a few weeks ago, from this paper right here that you can find in the description as well. In this case, with the scientists relying on a completely new technique in order to investigate the inner structure of the planet and in order to discover what's going on on the inside. And by using this extremely detailed observation based on the seismic activity on planet Earth, they were able to definitively see something on the inside. But I guess let's discuss this in a little bit more detail and also talk a little bit more about what this might mean for future research and what this means for planet Earth. But let's start with a bit of a history of how all of this started to begin with. Now, a lot of early research on planet Earth determined that there are definitely at least four layers. And actually by 1936, the scientists were pretty certain that there is the crust, the mantle, the outer core, which basically produces the magnetosphere, and the inner core. With all four structures obviously interacting with one another, with the inner structures obviously creating a lot of effects on the surface as well. For example, one of the main reasons we even have the magnetosphere, which obviously protects planet Earth, is because of the very specific type of circulation inside the outer core of the planet that turns around in just the right way to create these powerful effects. But the reason it's able to move around so much is actually because the inner core extremely slowly grows in size, cooling down, solidifying, and releasing heat and light in the process. And this heat warms up the outer core, generating the dynamo that then creates the magnetosphere. And so whatever happens inside the inner core is actually extremely important for basically the survival of life on the planet, which is really one of the primary reasons so the scientists want to understand a little bit more about how all of this works. Obviously, this is not something that developed on other planets very well. For example, both Mars and Venus, despite relatively similar composition, do not possess the same effects. And so in order to understand the habitability of planet Earth, the scientists absolutely have to study the inner core in order to see how it grows, how it changes in time, and what exactly it does to the rest of the planet. But obviously studying the inner core is extremely challenging. There's really only one known technique we have that allows us to see the insides. It relies on detecting various very powerful seismic waves, or essentially earthquakes, that go through the entire planet, changing their direction and changing their speed in the process. Because as the waves pass various structures, they tend to change their direction, they also tend to change their speed, which can then help the scientists figure out where the boundaries lie, but more importantly, what sort of a density and composition the inner structure has. But one of the main reasons it became so much easier today is really because of the number of various data collection centers or seismic monitoring stations that now exist around the globe, which in essence allows the scientists to scan the internal structure of the planet with much higher resolution than was ever possible before. But even 20 years ago, back in 2002, the scientists looking at some of this data already discovered something a little bit unusual. Two scientists, whose paper you can find in the description, tried to explain the discrepancies they were finding in the travel time of various wave models as a potential new structure inside the inner core something they believed was about 300 kilometers in diameter, so not really that big compared to the rest of the planet, but still big enough to present a bit of a difference, with additional papers from other scientists potentially confirming their findings and suggesting that it was maybe just even a little bit larger, at 400 kilometers. But anyway, this kind of laid the groundwork for what became a two-decade-long study trying to figure out if there's really something inside or if it was just some kind of a phenomenon we could not understand. And two years ago, another study, looking at various evidence from powerful earthquakes, discovered even more evidence that there's definitely something on the inside. Something that was even more dense than the core we're aware of, and very likely containing mostly iron. Or essentially, the innermost inner core. The fifth official layer of the planet. And so through years and years of investigation and analysis, and by combining data from a lot of different earthquakes, in this case mostly from Alaska, which does tend to have a lot of powerful earthquakes, the scientists were able to actually find something unique that was never seen before. As some of these seismic waves passed through the core of planet Earth, many of them started to reverberate inside some kind of a structure on the inside. 
and in some cases they bounced around at least five times. Now sometimes the scientists have detected a reverberation of two times, but five times is basically unheard of. And it really just meant one thing, that there was something on the inside that caused the waves to kind of echo around, kind of like inside an empty room, with all of these echoes or reverberations eventually being detected by other sensors, with the earthquake that happened in 2017 on the Solomon Islands contributing the most. This was a 7.9 earthquake, so it did create quite a lot of powerful waves that bounced around the inner core several times. And this data confirmed the structure, but it also allowed the scientists to almost definitively determine the size of the structure. It seems to be much larger than originally thought, maybe 400 miles, approximately 640 kilometers in size, which is twice as big compared to the original prediction from 2002. And although it's always been believed that the inner core is made out of some kind of a iron nickel alloy, the scientists believe that the innermost inner core is almost entirely iron. And by itself this already presents us with a very interesting mystery and something that currently the scientists cannot explain. One suggestion here is that Earth might have experienced two distinct periods during its early development that produced two separate cores on two different occasions, and possibly for two different reasons. At the same time, the properties of this innermost core suggest that there is some kind of an unknown phase change of iron that must happen on the boundary of these two cores. The iron core on the inside and the iron nickel core on the outside go through some kind of a change, possibly due to temperature or pressure, in order to form these two distinct structures on the inside. But because it's also much larger than the scientists originally believed it to be, it also probably has quite a lot of effects that we've never really considered before. For example, one of the recent videos about the core presented a new paper where the scientists tried to explain why the rotation of the core itself seems to occasionally change with time. In other words, the spin of the core seems to oscillate going back and forth a little bit faster or a little bit slower than the rotation of the planet. At the moment, it's unknown why it does so, but there's maybe a very good explanation hiding somewhere here. All of this could be due to the innermost core that's somehow causing these oscillations which then reverberate through the entire planet. It's also quite possible that it's actually because of this structure that we even have the outer core that then produces the magnetic field. And more importantly, it suggests that the early Earth must have gone through some unusual period that resulted in the formation of these two separate layers, something that some other planets might have not gone through, which explains why they're so different. But since its diameter is about half the diameter of the inner core, it most likely has quite a lot of effects which need to be investigated in future studies. So obviously at the moment there is really no suggestion on what exactly this does to the rest of the planet and what effects it might have on the other cores or even the mantle or even the crust of the planet. So this is still a completely new discovery. But in the last few years this is not the only unusual discovery about the core of the planet and even not the strangest one. Because once again, since we have so many seismic detectors on the planet now, with many listening at all times, the scientists have started to discover some really cool things about the internal structure of the core, with many discoveries listed in the description below. For example, one of the recent discoveries from a couple of years ago has also suggested that for some reason the inner core seems to actually grow differently depending on the side. It seems to grow faster on one side compared to the other. This was a pretty big discovery and it definitely has quite a lot of effects on the rest of the planet. And this is definitely something I want to follow up on in the next few years as the scientists discover more. At the same time, the scientists have learned that quite a lot of ancient helium is leaking from the core of the planet, potentially producing some other effects as well. But intriguingly, one of the best ways for us to learn about the core of planet Earth is by actually launching a spacecraft to another body, in this case the asteroid 16 Psyche, which NASA is supposed to launch sometime in 2023. You can learn more about this particular mission in one of the videos in the description. And so because it's believed that Psyche might represent some kind of a ancient undeveloped iron body that was supposed to become a core of ancient planet, by learning more about its structure, its composition, and of course its formation history, we might be able to understand what happened to planet Earth a long time ago. And thus figure out why planet Earth has conditions that planet Earth has, yet Mars, Venus, or even Mercury do not. What exactly happened to planet Earth to make it habitable and to make it perfect for life? Something we're going to be discussing more in some of the future videos as well. Anyway, on that note, well, pretty exciting, a great confirmation of an old theory, and of course an official reason to rewrite a lot of high school books, because it looks like Earth has five layers, not four. Although that inner core definitely needs to have a better name. 
innermost inner core just doesn't really roll off the tongue very easily. So let's just give it an easier name. Huh? I'm gonna call it Bob. We'll come back and talk more about this once more is discovered, but until then, check out some of the previous videos on a similar topic in the description below, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.